Hello and Shabbat Shalom. I'm actually vlogging for the second time today. This is my dear friend Christy Bell. She's semi awkward, so she's a little bit, she's a little bit uncomfortable about doing this. And that's a shout out to my good friend Sean Tech. He came up with this whole thing one time about being in three categories: normal, awkward, semi awkward, and then actually we end up on our own coming up with another category, which was a four stock. So. <laughs> He did a whole college thing on it. And also shout out to D Danielle who's recovering from her surgery. I've been praying and really believing that complete healing and restoration is coming to you. So I love you both. Okay, so this is my friend, Christy. I actually have two really good friends, Christy. I've got my Tennessee Christy and my Vermont Christy. So I find that to be really funny. And they're both mercy. So I clearly have a type. So you're my type. <laughs> I gotta make her laugh because she just she says she's only doing this because she loves me, I right? Love you. Yeah, and yes. because her husband told her she should. <laughs> Shout out to Pat. <laughs> she had me doing. She had me doing all of this, you know. Cause <laughs> okay, so what are we talking about today? We're talking about boundaries because I don't know anybody that has better boundaries and can educate someone on boundaries more than Christy. I'm sure she doesn't like that introduction, right? <laughs> but I think it's true. And I actually, you, Susan. I did not have good boundaries before I met Christy. Um, I think I naturally had good boundaries when I was young. And then kind of when you get churchified, you get taught some things that are more church, like interaction mm -hmm. type things. How would you word that? Other than really biblical boundaries. Religious? Yeah, that would be good. Which I was just talking about in my vlog that I did right before I came here. I was talking about rest. It's perfect. Yeah. And I was saying that, you know, you can do things on Sabbath. You don't have to be religious. Mm -hmm. But then there's also this place of wanting to be holy, which is something that you and I have talked a lot about. Mm -hmm. And so I think that we've been told or given the impression that boundaries are not holy. Um, that they're not kind. That they're not loving. But actually... They are kind and they are loving because you're actually letting someone know where they are in the relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeshua what would be a had good boundaries. Yeshua had boundaries? So it's obviously loving to have boundaries. And he retreated all the time. Mm -hmm. How many times in the Bible does it say? I don't know. And he lot. retreated and he went off by himself. Mm -hmm. He was like, man, these people always find me. It says, and then he took compassion on them. That's I can true. so relate. Can't you? Yes. <laughs> Even my dog won't leave me alone. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I mean, All I right. have plenty of space. I work from home. That's but true. But you don't have as much space as I do. I don't have any space at all. No space. We have your one car bathroom. Is my car is my space. That's why you vlog in this car. <laughs> That's true. This is your and room. And isn't it trendy? I think so, yeah. Which I don't actually like that, but, you know, because I don't really like trends. But anyway. Yeah. Okay, so actually before we talk about boundaries, this is fun. It's so we fun. We do. We try to spend Shabbat with each other as much as we mm -hmm. can. So I met Christy, um, um, our mutual boss and friend, family member, pastor, father-in-law, father mother-in-law. Yeah. Um, I had been in a boundaries class with my pastor's wife. And that was a real game changer with some dynamics that I was having. Mm -hmm. Who wrote that book, the Boundaries book? There's like a whole boundary series. Was it by someone with the last name Cloud? Bill Cloud? No, that's not. It's not Bill Cloud. I don't know. Google it. It'll come up. But I have no idea. So we did this boundaries class, and I realized, wow, I've lost my boundaries. And one of the things that I realized a lie that I had come into agreement with is I had been told that you don't get to choose your friends. And I think that the dynamic there that's good is that you don't always get to choose who comes into your life, mm -hmm. but you actually do get to choose how close they are to you. Yeah. And people do have to earn that spot up close to you. And I was in a situation where I had let actually multiple people, but one person in particular too close to me and that caused me a lot of harm. And I know that you've been in a situation like that as well. Mm -hmm. But you've also been <clears throat> in therapy. Yep. And you learned a lot about boundaries there. Yep. And what, 
what is it that really made you grab hold of boundaries and realize that's something you wanted to incorporate into your life? I feel like it was when I met the father, I learned that they weren't mean. It was okay Mm -hmm. to actually set a boundary and say, this is how far I'm going to let people in. And I used to think that that was so cruel because especially when you're in mercy, Mm -hmm. you want to be empathetic to everyone, but then you're not loving yourself at all if you don't have boundaries. So you have, you know, different relationships with different people and that's okay. You don't have to have everyone be super close. You can have some people know more intimate details and some don't have to and that's totally up to you and there's nothing unloving about that love has nothing to do with how much you let people into your life Mm -hmm. so it was really when I met the father and I think I was in college and I had lots of different types of friends and I had seasons where I wanted to keep people further and obviously there's a healthy version of boundaries and an unhealthy you can keep people too far or too close and rely too much and like find some people that you tell everything to to a degree where it's unhealthy too but I guess that's when I started to like examine them for the first time so what was the thing that you told me about I remember sitting in the church office one time and you were telling me the thing about the castle I know you said you were the fence yeah yeah why do I I'm gonna open the door it's hot I know I do (laughs) you like to say moat you can do a moat you can have a castle I want to have a castle okay (laughs) You, so you, tell it, you tell it your way. There was a counselor who was teaching a class on boundaries, I think, and he, I'm going to, this is just my version of it. I don't really remember exactly what he said, but you pretty much, you have a house that you live in, mm-hmm. and then you get to have a fence around the house, and you pretty much can, you get to establish how that looks for you. It's not going to look the same for everyone, but some people might not even want a fence and like or that might be an unhealthy version for them they have no fence they don't Mm -hmm. think they're allowed to have a fence around their house and then some people have huge gates up and no one can get in and you literally isolate yourself from everyone so I think he was talking about the healthiest model being like you have a a fence and you have a gate to the fence that you can open and shut it when you want and you have to determine I guess not just what's healthy for you because you have your own idea of what's healthy but what the father says is the healthiest for you. Mm-hmm. So pretty much you get to, you like, you have to have a fence around a garden a lot of the time to keep it healthy. And so it's like everything within your parameter, in order to keep it healthy, you have to take care of it and tend to it. And whoever you let in, you have to be aware and discern who you should let all the way into your house and what rooms they're allowed to go in kind of thing. Like it's a metaphor you could go on forever with. But yeah. Yeah, but it was a game changer for me because I realized I actually did have a say. I don't have to just let people have full access to me. And to your deepest deepest rooms and stuff that are not meant for everyone. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes not only do you really betray yourself, you actually betray the people closest to you. Mm -hmm. And I know that women in particular can be guilty of this, married women who will share personal things about their husbands for the sake of transparency, but really they uncover their husband and share things maybe about their marriage bed or things that he's struggling with or maybe a fight that they had with people that they shouldn't share that with, and it really is gossip or slander or, you know, it's not someone that's going to love your husband unconditionally and call you to be a good wife or a righteous wife. It's someone who will kind of use that against him. In, right. in some way. And that's when you can often tell when something's gossip. Because if someone lets you in <clears throat> to like their deeper rooms, then that's usually something that it's intimate and they're letting you in and mm-hmm. it's private. And if you need to go to someone else to get them help or, you know, to go deeper in that, you can. But it depends on if they're okay with it. And it, dep- it just depends on a whole a whole ton of things. But when it comes to your own... Like, when you let someone into those deep places, for example, like a husband, you would need to, you know, get permission before you Mm -hmm. just go and let all that information out. But sometimes you find out things on a deeper level that you may need to go to someone else. But it's Mm -hmm. very much like, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this. No, that was good. Yeah, that's all I have to say on that. So what's funny is, is I was asked to disciple her. God totally set us up. You do she cycle. said, why are you here? And I said, oh, I was sent here for you. I knew, I just knew it. Yeah, I do, but, but you pour into me too. 
because that's what that's one of the things of a healthy relationship yes. is that there's a back and forth. Right. You don't want a therapist. You don't want your friend to just be your therapist. Right. That's you want a helpful. friend. Well, yeah. and I have a friend that's a therapist. So, well, and she just wants to be my friend. Exactly. <laughs> you can have friends who are therapists. You don't want your friend to be your therapist. That's why therapists right. don't want to know beyond you in their room. You don't have a relationship with them beyond that room for a reason. Well, you've shared this with all of my kids, but in particular, my youngest, Petra. And mm-hmm. she's really grabbed hold of the boundaries. And she's even called you on some boundaries oh, stuff all the before. Time. <laughs> she all loves the time. it. I had no idea how that would make her feel so safe and yeah, secure. Yeah, because that's what it is. Kids especially, like all while you're growing up, it's pretty much your safety parameters when right. you're a little kid. But when you're an adult, you can still have them. It's a trust thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what do you think are some of the things that are red flags in a friendship in particular that lets you know that a relationship could be potentially toxic and how close you should let that person to you? Or maybe knowing if you've let someone too close to you. Do you, do you have any like markers that you look for? I feel like right off the bat, you can usually tell when someone has similar boundaries to you. So you may not need to go too deep into like sharing all your boundaries. Right. It may not even need to be a conversation. Like there are some <laughs> friends who it's just you're both similar. Like you may have one day a week where you're like in a place where you want to hang out. And other than that, you're busy all the time. Right. It's usually, and that's fine. Yes. People usually gravitate towards people who have similar boundaries to right. them, I feel like. But then there are times when especially people like who are super empathetic you can let people in too far and it's not always their fault it could easily just be something that was mutual and you both let it go too far and if you love yourself enough and you love that person then you have to realize okay have they gone too far and is this something that you can come back from like is this something right. that you can explain right you can have the conversation and be like hey this is not a place I can go with you but maybe we can try doing this and then I mean, you can try, but right. it's also up to you. Maybe you're like, this person went too far and it's just not going to be healthy no matter what, like no matter how the conversation that we have. But I would say if the Lord has it on your heart, it's definitely worth fighting for and, and trying to at least have a conversation and seeing if they're willing to respect your boundaries. But that's a big thing with boundaries is a lot of the time, um, an unhealthy way of looking at it is you put your boundaries on someone else. Yes. Like it's a lot about expectations. Like, right. This is what I expect from you. And why are your boundaries not allowing that? And it's, it's not about what you expect from other people. It's what, what can I do? Mm-hmm. They're very personal, whether you like it or not. It's just, everyone has their own, everyone has their own house. Everyone has their own fence and you can't just hop over someone's fence because it fits in your boundaries. Right. Your boundaries are only yours. You cannot, you don't get to move someone else's fence to make more room in your yard. Like that's just not how it works. So I feel like that's when you need to, that's a red flag for me is if someone is trying to establish my boundaries for me. Right. Then right off the bat, you're going to be like, okay, this isn't really a friendship. This is more so you are using me for something that you're not getting from the Lord or controlling or controlling, which I, the thing is we all struggle with this sometimes. I feel like, at least I know I do. Like I struggle with, with like Patrick, my husband with trying to like, you might try to move his boundaries and be like, Hey, can mm-hmm. you do this or this? And then like, it's, it's very easy for right. that to happen. Sure. You have to be, you're not going to be perfect, but at least be aware. And right. when you're crossing a line, maybe ask that person, am I crossing a line? What are your lines? Like you can easily start mm-hmm. off a relationship just asking someone that, especially dating or that kind of thing. You should know each other's boundaries, but with right. a friendship, it's very different, obviously. Well, it's it like Beth be. Moore says authentic to all, transparent to most, Mm -hmm. intimate with few. And I think that is a really good visual boundary, Mm -hmm. at least in my mind. It's like three circles. And in my mind, I picture where people are on that. Yeah. And you always start out on the outer one, which is opposite. Because I was taught that you always let people close to you, and then you can lose trust and you push them out. But I do it the opposite now. You start out and you work your way in. Mm -hmm. And then I approach that with people as well because I can very quickly, because of my charismatic personality, people will feel closer to me than what we really are. Mm -hmm. And so that's something I've had to work on, which is still being myself, but showing people, you know, or verbalizing to people that I'm not available all the time, like my family's my priority. Right. Or I already have 
a really close circle and you can only fit so many friends in that circle. Mm -hmm. So I've had to move people out because they would not stop trampling my boundaries. And then I've had to like re-solidify relationships, mm -hmm. kind of redefine them, I guess. Like yeah. you were saying with friends and say, hey, I'm sorry that I've not made our friendship a priority because you actually really are a priority. Right. And it doesn't mean you never tell someone, hey, that kind of hurt me or yes. whatever. And you can talk it through. But friendship should not necessarily be so hard. It shouldn't be so hard, <laughs> but it can be messy. It can and be, like, it can be when messy. You're in the innermost circle, you are going to have disagreements, and you're there's going to sure. be moments on things that you just don't see eye to eye on. Mm -hmm. But if you're safe, because you need to be safe in order mm -hmm. to have healthy friendships, then you'll be able to be honest. And if you right. genuinely cannot be honest, no matter how hard you try, like that's clearly not healthy. That's right. not good for either of you, I think. Well, we we did a young adults group. Was that two years ago? Three years ago, it was longer. right before COVID. So 28. <laughs> <laughs> and we were doing Chuck Missler's 24 Hours Through the Bible. Mm -hmm. And that's one of my favorite studies. And some people really liked it. Some people hated <laughs> it. Some people were in between. And so that was a, that was a really interesting challenge to um, friendships, relationships, because it brought a lot to the surface. Our relationship survived through that. Our did it did because you didn't Nephilim. always do your homework. She Never didn't like talking homework. about the you didn't like talking that was about my the boundary. Nephilim. I didn't do my homework. <laughs> you couldn't change that for me. No, I couldn't. That would be crossing but, my line. But what's funny is now you like yes, thinking now about all it. that stuff and studying it because you're not afraid of it anymore. Yes. But why do you think why is that? What clicked for you? Because you really have You've had a shift spiritually where you're learning you're really about the father. Learning about the father, okay. I had to understand I had to understand the whole Bible through the eyes of Yeshua and mm -hmm. not just cuz we were also just going from start to finish. So it wasn't mm -hmm. all about him. And that for me is hard. Like I have mm -hmm. when I learn things through the lens of the father, mm -hmm. it's easier for me. And then when I see like this matters to him, then it matters to me. It didn't matter to me. Right. Because I didn't realize that it mattered to him. Right. Because you're really in pursuit of holiness. I guess you can I, say You that. don't feel like you can say that, but you can. <laughs> you can say that that's your desire. Yes, it's You don't it's my want desire. religion. Yes. But you really do want to do what's right. And yes. so you've been looking at Shabbat, the mm -hmm. holidays. Who yes. is he, this Jewish Messiah that mm -hmm. I thought was a white Jesus? I mean, I still struggle <laughs> with doing what, what I think I'm supposed to do. Instead of what his heart is. But I definitely want that. But I think you're approaching it from a place of intimacy, which is yes. good. Because you're really choosing not to be religious and well, not to, to be un it. inauthentic, right? Yeah. So you're you're working your way towards mm -hmm. what's holy and what's righteous. Yes, which is how it happens. And you're doing it at a pace where you, you're like slowly building up momentum, which I think is cool. I've been really enjoying watching that. Well, you've helped me have a focus. I appreciate oh, that's it. good. I am good at that. You're really, that's a <laughs> really good time. time you have. You're really good at filtering things. Well, that's because I try to have the lens of love. And one of my favorite yes. scriptures is love assumes the best. Mm -hmm. And not very many people talk about that scripture. But what I like is it sets a boundary all the time that I get to assume the best about everybody. Mm -hmm. And they should assume the best about me. But if they're not, that's actually not on me. Mm -hmm. So then I don't have to perform because right. that's actually between them and God. Even if I am making a mistake or in the right. wrong, it's still between them and God. And so I don't have to judge people because I'm not the judge. And I don't have to spend all of my thought life thinking about what did that person mean when they said that? And what was that look? Because it's probably not even about me. Maybe they're having a bad day. Now, if there's a situation I have to deal with, I have boundaries and I do have the tools to yeah. have appropriate conflict, conflict resolution, which kind of is one of those things you work on with boundaries is being able to yeah. have conflict, which, you know, neither of us really like conflict. But Most conflict is related to boundaries, too, and people crossing right. lines, I feel right. like, in, at least in friendships. But you also, when, like you were saying, um, you don't have to let, like, th when people don't see you the way that... God sees you or the way you hope they see you a lot of people tend to then want to bring them into their inner circle right and tell them everything and that's a lot of the time when people can become too intimate too fast with people that right. aren't meant to be in that position so that's a good boundary to have is 
not everyone needs to like me and not everyone even needs to know me or right. know the truth about me. Right. Which you're really good at that. Thank you. Well, I've had to work on that. 